and welcome to episode number 10 of the Who Am I podcast with the Southside Church of Christ. This is Brian Dill. I'm Jackson Wells. And we are so glad that you decided to join us this week. As you know, we like to start things off kind of lighthearted, and this week we're going to share some some did-you-know information, and we decided that each of us were going to come up with a random Bible fact. <laughs> and when I sent this to Jackson, I left it intentionally vague. Yeah. I wanted to see where in the world no, what, your what, mind went. What are with the that odds idea. that we, we've come up with the same fact? I'd say slim to none. Yeah, there's no way. There's okay. no way. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say you, you go okay. first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whenever I thought of this, I was like there there are so many random facts, but I was right. like, I wanna know about animals. And, and okay. so I looked up animal facts, and um, in the Bible, it is recorded three times someone killed a lion. Um, oh, okay. So Samson, great, great story there. He rips yeah. a lion in half. Right. Who's the other one? Beniah. Beniah. Okay. Yeah. That was the one that I thought people listening might not get as quickly, but he's, right. he's one of David's mighty men. Yes. And then David is the other one um, when he's... Uh, tending his sheep. Oh, right. And, a long, and he just kind of tells that story. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah I killed a lion. I also killed yeah. a bear. Um, yeah, no so, like, deal. yeah, <laughs> pretty much I'm the best shepherd ever. <laughs> but, yeah, three people uh, killed lions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Benaiah, there's some cool things out oh, there yeah. about that story. And it was sure snowing. It was, on that you did, a few you did. Years ago. I remember, I remember you. It was snowing on the day. Yes. He, he fought yes, a lion on a snowy day. <laughs> in a pit on a snowy day. <laughs> what a random <laughs> that's, thing that's to do. That's the most random. Well, like, why, why is, I mean, he's a mighty man, so like they've got to include something that proves that he's mighty. So that's yeah. pretty awesome. That is. <laughs> it is. No doubt. All right. So here's here's my random fact. You know, a lot of people ask about. Like translations, they'll find something. Ooh, do you know about this translation? Do you know about how many English translations there are today? No, no, because there there are a million. (laughs) (laughs) It feels like that, doesn't it? I go to uh, the the website that I like to use is Bible Gateway. Yes, um, right. And you could just click on the little drop down menu, and I mean, you yeah, got an acronym yeah. for every single letter of the and alphabet. Now there may be some of those that are that are out of print. I know, mm-hmm. I know the, the information I found is that there are are more than fifty full Bible translations available to for sale today, like that wow. you could go buy. Wow. Um, you know, there might be three that are worth buying. No, just <laughs> kidding. And and we think, you know, man, that's that's kind of a problem sometimes. Mm-hmm. We think, how am I supposed to know? Which one to get? Which one can I trust? And all, mm-hmm. you know, all these questions go through our mind. But, you know, I feel like that's a little bit better problem to have than, say, the Dark Ages. Yeah. When it was heresy yeah. to translate the Bible into <laughs> English. And so I was looking at some of that, and, uh, you know, I taught a, a class on church history about a year and a half ago, and... One of the things that we talked about was that process of it getting translated yeah. into English, and uh, John Wycliffe was one who is a is an incredibly important person in the history of getting the Bible translated into English. Okay, or or really the the problem was it, I thought it was that it was not in Latin. Oh, uh, I thought it, it was King James. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it was about three hundred years later. So Wycliffe's influence. It impacts every English translation since his translation. But 30 years after he died, the Catholic Church at the Council of Constance, th- this is after he died, <laughs> excommunicated Wycliffe <laughs> for translating Dang. the Bible into English. And just to make sure that it actually meant something, they exhumed his body. Oh my goodness! Burned it and threw the ashes in the river. Yeah, I, I still, I still don't think it it did much for him. You know, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> just and that, just one of many examples of crazy things that happened yeah. in that whole process of translating it into English. Yeah. So this this could be completely 
not true, but I was talking to somebody about the the Bible being in Latin and right. uh, people not understanding what it meant and right. like actually misunderstanding what they heard because if you went to church you you heard the Bible you didn't read the Bible yes and th- like I said this could be completely wrong but it's it sounds almost true but the concept of hocus pocus yes is that true uh, oh. hocus pocus <laughs> comes from the communion uh, a misunderstanding of the Latin phrase that I can't remember off the top of my head but yeah. yeah. Yeah, they thought it was magical. <laughs> and it and in fact, the story goes that some people were were a little scared of it yeah. because of this and would hold the sacraments in their mouth until they got home and spit it out on the ground. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> that's that's dedication. Man. So, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. So now we're going to transition into the the meat of the week which we hope is something that you can sink your teeth into a little bit more. And uh, you may have noticed the the title of our episode this week is Am I a Cheerful Giver? Of course, that phrase is one that really has two parts to it. You know, the, the giving part, but then there's the am I a cheerful giver? You know, that kind of has some connotations there, yeah. some implications there yeah. that... Uh, we <laughs> we may struggle with, but uh, there's I don't think there's any question that that giving is a fundamental aspect of our Christian faith, being a follower of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse seven is where the phrase "cheerful giver" comes from. It says, "Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly." or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And what I really like about that particular passage is that it's not just some random idea that that Paul is throwing at this church in Corinth. He references the churches in Macedonia, and he talks about how they gave out of even their poverty, and how they gave in ways that that were were so unexpected and he just holds these churches up in, in Macedonia as just a great such a great example of giving cheerfully being eager to participate in that ministry and i i think that's the part that we struggle with yeah. sometimes the, yeah the idea of being eager yeah. to give well, you know how how often is that not very, of us, right? <laughs> not very. Right. I think, and, and this could be just because we're humans, or it could be because we're Americans. But we we kind of have this mindset of it's mine. I want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Um, I earned it. Mm-hmm. Right. I did. But of course, that forgets that really all that we have is from God. Yeah. This and, is this is a silly question. So it says God loves cheerful giver, right? Right. Does God hate a non cheerful giver? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think I think we would say that that God desires us to be giving right. first. Well, and, and, then, and then this uh, the the second part of that is when we're talking about we're talking about giving monetarily here. Does the the concept of it, if it's bad money, is it still good money for the church? <laughs> if it's given with a cheerful or an uncheerful uh, less than heart. cheerful heart, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean it's still going to be put to good use, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and and I think that part of that is, you know, even if it's hard at first, there are ways that we can yeah. move toward being cheerful givers, and and I think one of the things that can help us with that is understanding the purpose of our giving. Yes. You know, absolutely. we wanna absolutely we wanna give to to those that are in need. You know, that's a part of, of our giving. Proverbs nineteen seventeen says, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Uh, the indication there being that that we're giving to help others. You know, that's a that's a big part of, of our giving. And then the more we do it, I think also, it helps us grow in our faith. Mm-hmm. We are 
are learning to trust in God. Like you said, you know, that it's mine. I want to I want to hold on to what's mine. Yeah. But we forget, you know, James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Everything that we have is from God. The, the talents that we have that we use, the skills that we have that we can use to earn a living, those are ultimately from God. And by then turning around and giving out of what we have earned really helps, I think, uh, helps us to develop a spirit of trust in God, first of all, that, that He's going to continue to yeah. provide. And also it uh, pro- helps create gratitude and contentment, mm-hmm. which I think are, are really the essential elements to, to becoming a cheerful giver. Yeah. The more we do that, the more that we practice that giving that in that way, it is going to naturally create a cheerfulness in us if we are mindful of those things. Absolutely. I think gratitude gratitude is something that we 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 acknowledge almost every single time we pray or at least when we're in church we we right. thank God for what right. we've been given. But the contentment part is where we struggle a lot because, yeah, we've been given everything we'll ever need, <laughs> but it would be nice to have the bigger <laughs> right. house or, or the nicer car or whatever. And right. so contentment is something that, man, uh, again, as, as Americans, I think we definitely struggle with. Uh, no thanks to social media, too. Oh, man, and that just ex- <laughs> that just makes it worse, makes it worse. And, and let's not forget, too, that a part of being a cheerful giver, a part of our giving needs to be more than than just money. I mean, certainly, giving financially is is something that is important and essential to to our our faith. But giving of ourselves, giving of our time, uh, giving of our skills, mm-hmm. our talents, uh, even giving of our possessions—you know, using the possessions that we have in a way that is helpful to others. Yeah, you know, those are things that that we can't. We can't forget about. It. We've got to remember to be giving in all these different yeah. ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be easy for us to do. <laughs> Just right. Like us talking about <laughs> being cheerful givers isn't going to automatically make you want to be a cheerful <laughs> giver. <laughs> right. And so there, there are definitely some things that that challenge us to be cheerful givers. It's in our nature. We've we've said it. It's in our nature to want to keep what we have quote unquote earned even though it's been given to us by God the blessings have been given to us by God we 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 don't deserve it yet we have it and so we want to keep it therefore we don't want to give it and there has to be a, a kind of change of heart a mindset of selflessness in order to give and right, so absolutely you got to overcome that hurdle of I want to keep it because I earned it you can't take it with you when you go. I've been playing Clash of Clans a lot lately, and somebody <laughs> uh, somebody jokingly came up to me and and said, "Can you take that to heaven?" Because I can, been, can you take the the yeah, game, can, the I, video I, I, game? And I said, "I hope so. I hope so." You know, I was just joking, <laughs> but I was like, "Well, this is it's consuming a lot of my time. Therefore, I'm, I'm not able to give." And so there there are things that we have to cut out of our lives, perhaps, mm. so we can give more of our time to God. And I think that's one of the the obstacles that has to be overcome is the idea that it's mine. And if we can start cutting some of those things that we think are ours, mm-hmm. uh, then, then yeah. that allows for more giving. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and the, the time thing is, is tricky because we, we think we have, well, I'm, I'm youngish. And so I think I've got <laughs> unlimited time, you know, <laughs> right. and if I'm sitting here, Playing a video game, no, nothing against video games. It's a great activity. You're not, you know, out doing <laughs> other things. Could be worse, um, right? But there, there are other things that I could be doing that would theoretically be me giving to the Lord, furthering His kingdom. Mm. Yes, absolutely. In regards to giving talents, sometimes there's a challenge there because we don't immediately know. Uh, how to give <laughs> or or what to give we we either we don't know what our talent is we haven't figured that out yet we haven't found right. our song and <laughs> or we we know what we can do but we just don't know how to use it 
And I think this kind of ties back into getting to know your elders or maybe even just getting to know people at your church. The more you become involved, the more you give your time, the more people are going to get to know you and the more plugged in you are going to be able to, to get in your church and the more useful you will become. And also you're going to find out that there are talents you didn't think you had. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Expanding your horizons mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. is an important part of really just growing into using the talents that you have for God's kingdom. Yeah. Even in the last year and a half or however long we've been doing Kingdom Kids, it's been fun to see how people have evolved in teaching. There are people who swore up and down that they, they could never that that was not their talent. <laughs> right. And now they're they're involved with it and they're going ahead and planning six months ahead that they're gonna teach this class. The only way that they can get to that point is to to just to trust and give themselves to that time and then in the future you're like eager. You you become that cheerful giver. You're you're eager to to give your time and teach a class. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I think that what gets in the way of that sometimes is we we think uh, too big in terms of what we should be doing or giving, you know, whether that's financially or talent or time mm-hmm. or whatever. And we think, oh, man, I don't have that much time. I don't have these big talents that everybody can see. And I don't have all this money. And we forget that you, you got to start somewhere. So So even if you need to start small, you know, whether that's a, a small amount of money to begin with to mm-hmm. kind of get things going and gradually increasing or starting by helping out in like a like you said, a Bible class where maybe you're just the person there to help yeah. first and then see how it goes and say, ooh, maybe I can fill in once in a while for this person as they're teaching or or maybe I could take this on or maybe there's another classroom that I really could step into. And just progressing, just that the idea of growing into greater service and yeah. giving is really important. Absolutely. And don't forget that it's also important for us to be praying about our giving. Yeah. Uh, praying to God for for a a generous heart. Praying that God will help us to learn to give more. Praying uh-huh. that we will have people in our lives that encourage us to give appropriately. And yeah. I don't. I don't know that I've ever made that request to pray for people to encourage me to give. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and even seeking out other Christians who who want to give generously. You know, take some advice from them. How did you get to the point where you are now, mm-hmm. or or something of that nature? I mean, and it doesn't have to be about dollar amounts or anything like that. Just talk about methodology, I mm-hmm. think, for becoming a more cheerful giver. And I think that's kind of where we're we're going to sort of wrap things up here with this episode. We want to provide you, our listeners, with some tips on how to become better givers. All right? And so we have four here, four practical tips. And the first is give regularly, as in make it a habit. Yeah. This this doesn't need to be something that that you wait until it's it's most convenient or when there's enough left over for God mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or something of that nature. It's got to be a part of a regular habit. Yeah. In my opinion, if you're if you're anything like me, it, <laughs> the only way that I'm going to remember is to not have to remember. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Aut- automate it. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, <laughs> Set it all up electronically. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and that just it just makes it easier. You know, it it it's hardly a habit if I'm not having to remember to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, secondly, give sacrificially. I think you know certainly. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and other places talk about the importance of Jesus' sacrifice. You know, he, he gave the ultimate sacrifice 
And, and certainly we want to follow in his footsteps. But I'm always reminded of 2 Samuel chapter 24. At the end of that chapter, there's a really interesting encounter when David and his men are out and he wants to make a sacrifice to God and he is offered all that he needs to make that sacrifice for free. They, 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 they say, well, here, here it is. You, you take it. You're the king. I, far be it from me to charge you for, mm-hmm. for anything. And David says, absolutely not. He refuses to not pay for it because he says, how could I offer something to God? I, I, I will not offer something to God that cost me nothing. Mm-hmm. And I love that idea because I think that is an, an aspect of our giving and the mindset behind our giving that has to be there. Give sacrificially. Yeah. And third, give intentionally. Seek out God's wisdom in your giving. Maybe you want to give to some things that are important to you in addition to whatever you're giving uh, to your home congregation. Mm -hmm. And and I think that for everybody, that's different. Everybody has different passions. Everybody has different causes that are important to them for whatever reason. And it may be something very personal, you know, you... Mm -hmm. Perhaps you were a child and you spent time at Potter Children's Home or A New Pathways. Sure, and, sure. You know, you, you saw the benefit of that and you want to help out other kids. Absolutely. Or maybe you or someone close to you has, has, you know, has dealt with cancer and so you want to de- give directly to cancer research and and things like St. Jude's Hospital or, or you know, things like that. Yeah. There are so many opportunities for those kinds of things. Of course, you want to be wise in the way that you right. give and, and making sure that it's going to the right places and going to the right things. But give intentionally. Give, give to things uh, in addition to what you're giving to your home congregation. Give to things that, that are really important to you. Uh, the, because not every congregation is is going to be able to to spread its funds out right. uh, to all these different branches. Right. Recently, we were at CYC, and one of the things they do every year is uh, they do a domestic collection, or oh. th- there's a domestic thing that they're trying to to fund or okay. uh, come up with some money to help with, and then there's a foreign thing. And one of the things that I love about those two things is somebody comes up on stage and they explain this is why we are giving to the thing that we are giving and here's what is going to benefit from you giving oh, and it's great. a it, it's a great thing like it, it kind of like takes the research out of your <laughs> out of your hands right um because they, they they explain it. of course you can always do more research if you you know don't trust whatever you're giving them to but it's nice to to also, as a that's a youth conference for the kids to see that, and yes. it provides them an opportunity to give. Definitely. So lastly, so give regularly, give sacrificially, give intentionally, and then don't forget, give anonymously. This is not about making a name for ourselves in our giving. Of yeah. course, Jesus addresses this in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand yeah. is doing. yeah. You know that doesn't mean literally. That, you know, that's hide the, behind your I think, back. <laughs> I think that's the online thing. Is I'm I'm not seeing it happen. Right. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they, and, and, I'm, I'm you anonymously know, out giving myself. Not so. everybody has needs to know yeah. what anybody else is yeah. giving. So remember that we're doing this for the good of others, for for the good of God's kingdom, for the good of those in need, and all those th- kinds of things. Give anonymously. So, am I a cheerful giver? When I think of the word cheerful, I think of somebody with a bright smile. They're giddy. They, they, <laughs> they're ready to, to just take on the world. And when I think of the good that when used effectively, that money and the talents that we've been given by God can produce, it makes me cheerful. 
Absolutely. It makes me want to give more of myself. It makes me want to encourage others to give of themselves, whether it be monetarily or with the skills I know that they have. The four things you said, give regularly, give sacrificially, give intentionally, give anonymously, sum it up perfectly in the, in the way that we should give. So I, I hope that you're a cheerful giver. I hope that you have been encouraged to be a cheerful giver. And I hope that you encourage others to be cheerful givers as well. Yes, and and if you're if you're not there yet, it's okay. You can get there. You yeah, know, just absolutely. work toward it. So we thank you so much for listening. We hope that this week's episode will help you grow in your identity as a follower of Jesus. Have a great week.